just walking, trying to get home. I do nothing, just leave me alone. Lord, give me wings to fly before they shoot me down. Hi, I'm so happy to be here with Mayor Kamal Johnson. The last six months have definitely been a an eye-opening experience. I'm, I'm glad I came back here. 15 years ago, I was lucky to find this haven. I want to make up for the lost time. I feel I've been a lapsed community member. I'm just feeling really lucky to be here and have a good open conversation with, uh, with someone who's trying to enhance and make Hudson better. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, thanks for having me. We, yeah, we were talking about, I was asking you about your favorite TV show. Yeah. Power. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, yes. A, I'm a huge Power fan. I would like to ask you about Power. How were you brought up to understand Power? I think I have a love for the show Power because um, I was a big fan of the show The Wire. Yeah. And um, it has a lot of uh, those components. It has the political component. It has the street component. Um, so, and, and there's just like a lot of uh, hidden dialogue there yeah. that I enjoy that's part of the show. Do you find that in your real life as you experience power as the mayor of Hudson? Yeah, I mean, it's not in intense, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I notice like a lot of uh, similarities between, you know, real life, especially for me, because I'm, I'm a young man that, you know, I grew up from the streets and, um, you know, I was able to change the narrative of my own life to become a public figure. Um, so it's always interesting to see the two on screen. With the experience you had in the past, mm -hmm. um, do you find that it creeps in and, and it allows you to engage in the political realm differently than a so-called groomed uh, politician? Yeah, I think um, it gives me an advantage because um, I get to be a part of both worlds and bridge both worlds. So. I can walk through, you know, some of the neighborhoods that other politicians would never go through. And um, I can connect on a level with those people because I understand where they're coming from firsthand. Um, but at the same time, you know, I'm educated and I'm able to also be in the rooms where, you know, we have our people that are running our cities, counties, and states. Speaking of that, the people, our people, all people, mm -hmm. um, as as the time as in this particular time i'm learning that it has it has a lot to do about race but more about uh economics mm -hmm. and i would like to ask you how are you feeling about all these changes and the and the, and the, the newcomers coming to hudson um how do you how do you feel about that and how do you bridge a communication between them and the people who have lived here and have their lives here. Yeah, I think um, the most important part of it is not to ignore the people who have been here and have their roots kind of ingrained in Hudson. So um, for people coming here, we want people to come in. We want our population to thrive and we want them to be part of our community. But at the same time, we have to balance that with equity. So we can't have just people coming in to the city while the others who have you know, dedicated their lives to the city are pushed out. And um, it's important for me to bridge that gap and create initiatives and programs and opportunities for people that are here. May I ask you about your ideas about getting more affordable housing here in Hudson? Yeah. Okay. That's um, one of my main focuses. That's the top thing that I want to see here in Hudson. So we put out a, a request for proposal for a housing consultant, and that per person will be tasked with um, looking at all of the property that's owned by the city and various city entities and determining which properties we should sell, which are deemed for affordable, doing um, whatever type of ground assessments on those properties, as well as other initiatives like our first time buy home buyers uh, program um, and also programs that offer incentives to keep people being able to afford the apartments and the homes that they're in so um, that's been you know the biggest push for me 
during my first, you know, eight months as mayor. With all the newcomers coming upstate, I, I, and me being one of them, I, I have a 10-year-old son, I'm always cherishing a great hope for the school system. How do you feel about the school system, one? Mm -hmm. Two, does your daughter participate in the Hudson School System? And are you working to sort of enhance that? And may I ask you how? Yeah, so that was also one of my campaign goals was to really get ingrained with our school system. Um, I went to Hudson schools. Uh, my daughter goes to Hudson schools. And um, that's really where my career kind of took place. Um, I got my first start at the schools, working in after school programs. And um, does our school system need help? Yes, but it's come a long way from where it used to be. What are your ideas to enhance the school system? Do you want to work with outside educational yeah. systems? Or? I think um, the understanding that education starts at home. And one of the very first initiatives that I launched, it was actually weeks into me becoming mayor, was uh, partnering with the Clinton Foundation, um, a local organization called Greater Hudson Promise Neighborhood, as well as Columbia Opportunities, in an initiative called Too Small to Fail. And um, that initiative basically details that education starts at home, but here are the right tools to start that. Because what we were seeing was a lot of our kids are getting to third grade and they, the word gap is so much um, of a distance for everyone that to catch up, it was, you know, impossible. It would take a, a tremendous amount of work. So we have to provide parents with those opportunities to be able to teach their kids at home and carry on what happens in school as a supplement to what their teachers are doing because a lot of our parents may have their own issues with education as well as their own issues with the school district. Um, if you had a bad experience, you're not gonna wanna come in and talk. So um, those are some of the things that we wanted to do. Talking is teaching was the name of the campaign and um, is this just what it's all about. There's education in everything that we do. Yes, I appreciate you saying that. My mother only had a fourth grade education and a lot of the tools I was lucky to find on my own and also my father was in the military, so there were lots of systems in place, and I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I've gotten this far. Um, for the people who are choosing to homeschool, or for the students who have no choice, mm -hmm. other, but don't have the, the necessary tools at home, like being online or computers, is there a program in Hudson available? Yeah. And, and how do people who are choosing to homeschool how can, what resources can they connect with as well? Yeah, so one of the, my biggest worries was when um, COVID-19 first really started to skyrocket and the schools started closing down was that um, in our city, we don't have universal Wi-Fi. So a lot of the kids um, either don't have any internet access or it's not, it's shoddy. Um, so, I partnered with an organization, a new organization called the Spark of Hudson, and we were able to provide uh, Wi-Fi hotspots to um, a large number of students in, um, in our community to get them on board. The school district was able to provide Chromebooks, and um, you know we're hoping to continue that throughout this school year because it's you know it's going to be a different school year than we've ever seen before, and I actually was able to. Um, deliver those hot spots myself so i you know went to and talked to families about their concerns and however we can do as a city you know to help them out okay kamal mayor kamal what keeps you up at night yeah i get that question a lot um and i think because i'm so busy i'm so worn out um that i i just pass out when it's time to go to sleep i'm uh -huh. like i'm out and like i've been able to learn to leave work at at work when the day's over. And I think for me and my own um, professional development and mental capacity, like that's been like my main focus just to say like, this will all be here tomorrow. Like yeah. now take care of yourself. Oh. And, Good young man. I would like to also ask you, when you do have worry, what, where, what do you do with your worry? Has there been some book or a person, a mentor of some sort? 
who's aided you in becoming who you are? Yeah, I mean, I've had a large number of mentors um, throughout my time, especially because, you know, I was a kid that was headed in the wrong direction so many times. But I would say professionally, what's gotten me over that hump is um, every Monday at one o'clock, you know, I, um, I go to therapy and, you know, I've been in therapy probably for about seven years. And, you know, just having that outlet to be like, it's like my diary and I can like get it out and, you know, next week is fresh. And um, I look forward to that all the time. Yeah. Wow. Uh, a lot of people are nervous or can't afford or have their own dogma about therapy. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to hear you say that. Yeah, and especially, you know, in the uh, black and brown communities, you know, there's a stigma around therapy. It's like, you know, it's not normal. So that's why I talk about it so freely yeah. because I want to, you know, normalize that so it's okay to take care of yourself. It's okay to express yourself, mm -hmm. especially when you come from, you know, a lot of tra trauma and, you know, carrying that trauma only leads to you know exploding one day may i ask you as someone who has to make a lot of serious decisions do you have a decision making process yeah i think i'm a i'm a workaholic and um every decision that i make i've been thinking about since the issue um became, came came to my attention so um I have a great team that I work with and um, we work through a lot of different things and also, um, you know, I also have like ADD. So like I, some things I can't stop thinking about and I can't stop brainstorming. So I'm always like, you know, kind of pushing like, all right, this is what we have to do. This is what I have to plan for. And, um, you know, I've been able to make it work for me. And um, I hope that's, you know, an example to other young people that may have had, you know, the same issues that, you know, I deal with. Has there been a book that has affected your life? Yeah, I would say um, there's been many, but the one that always comes to mind would be uh, John Steinbeck's um, Of Mice and Men. And uh, when I read this at first in high school, um, you know, and it was the part where uh, George kills Lenny. And I was like, ah, oh, how could he do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, that was his guy. Yeah. And it, it, it had me, like, so frustrated. But then, like, coming to terms with growing up, I realized the message behind, you know, sometimes having to, you know, theoretically kill something that's always going to be a detriment to your future. Um, and... Like whenever I come into a situation where people are like, you've changed or you this and that, I'm like, sometimes you have to kill Lenny for the betterment of yourself. Yes. Um, so like I always kind of use that message like in going forward. How has this moment in time, how has the Black Lives Matter movement changed how you facilitate and, and work within this system? Yeah, I think in this moment, um, was the right time for me. And it proved that representation matters. Um, so for the, some of the things that as a community, the black and brown community have been uh, voicing but never been heard, I've been able to bring that to the table and to the forefront to say like, you know, we should invest in people and not in entities. And that's why a lot of my initiatives that I've been able to put out these first four months have always been investments and people and not, you know, corporations or different things like that. Just everyday life, because especially as a politician and a young black man, when I was out knocking on doors and trying to get people to come out and vote, everybody said the same thing, you know, like, it doesn't matter who's in charge, like, it's not going to affect my life directly. And that's how, you know, we get a lot of bad people, a lot of bad characters in place because people think like it's, it just doesn't matter so for me every day I have to prove that it matters and um, I take that on and I want to also express that you know um, being a minority and being a diverse community is something that should be shouted from the rooftops it's something that we should be proud of and highlight so if you walk through our community you see our beautiful Black Lives Matter mural 
you see the Pan American, um, African American flag, right? We highlight that tradition and we highlight that missing um, storytelling and history. Um, and that's been, you know, an amazing ride for me. Yeah. Oh, I thank you. I thank you so much for your time. Thank you.